It's not like any other podcast. Coming to you straight from the heartland, where investing is told like it is. It's time for Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hold on, because here comes the next episode of the Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hey everybody, Darren Garman here, and welcome to this week's podcast, this 4th of July weekend podcast. Glad you're with me. Uh, Glad you're listening to me if you are listening over the 4th of July weekend, later, uh, whatever. Uh, I'm just glad you're with me wherever you're listening, however you're listening to me. Glad you are aboard. Before I forget and get into an interesting topic that um, I think will uh, get you to think a little bit and uh, ponder is our discovery day. We will be having another investment investor, Heartland Investor Property Discovery Day, where we invite you to attend. We pull back the curtain behind uh, our holdings, our properties, uh, what we're working on, what we own, what we plan on owning. This is an ideal environment for you basically to check me out and to check us out live and in person. So we literally pull the curtain back and you go behind the scenes and take a look at our properties, take a look at our methods and see how we do what we do and how you can be involved in what we do. And you'll find out how hundreds of investors from all over the U.S. are involved with us, why they are, And uh, it is really a good time, a relaxing time, a no pressure time to really see how things operate here and really make an informed decision on whether or not this is something you would want to be involved in. Uh, Many attend, uh, many are glad they attend, and so I would recommend you do the same. So look in your email, look for your invite to the Heartland Investment Property Discovery Day in July. Uh, If you're not on my email list, why in the heck aren't you on my email list, by the way? Make sure you go to formeriowabanker.com. That's formeriowabanker, all one word, formeriowabanker.com, and sign up. We will get you on the list, and or you can contact my staff, by phone, that's right, the old-fashioned phone, at area code 319-382-9900, 319-382-9900, ask for Lindsay, and tell her you want to be put on my email list. Okay, Uh, let's jump into what I want to call the initiative gap, the initiative gap. Uh... One of the things that us investors really need to be mindful of and aware of is the fact that we are really in the top 10%. Now, now here's what I mean by that. What I mean is statistically, if you do your research and your study, you will find that 90% of, uh, of Americans in this case don't really have a plan of investing, don't really have a plan of how they want to invest, no future thinking, no initiative. There's really nothing in place, which is the main reason why the average net worth of an American, I think, is somewhere around like $35,000 or something like that. And that is the reason why. So when you're in the top 10%, I'm not saying at this point, and I'm going to get into income and net worth here in just a second. So I'm not saying that you are, you know, in some elite top 10%. Okay, that's not my point. My point is 90% of Americans do not have a plan in place for their investing. So as a result, you're in the top 10%. And I was wrong, by the way. I just pulled up my computer and the average net worth, excluding the medium, 
The median net worth of all Americans is $80,039, according to what I'm reading right now. $80,039, excluding equity, which basically means excluding maybe a ownership in a home or condo, you are at $25,116. So let's just put it this way. The average net worth of an American, you know, here's one that says it's $68,828. This is from the Census Bureau. Let's go with that. The Census Bureau says um, $68,000. $828. Um, so we can probably conservatively say it's under a hundred grand. And if your net worth is under a hundred thousand dollars, there's really something wrong. And that's why you don't want to be like and do what most people do. I mean, there's really no excuse unless you're like 12 uh, unless you've had a financial hardship of some kind recently, uh, unless you've had money stolen from you, I mean, unless something like that has happened to you, there's really no reason to have a net worth of under hundred grand. None. But yet we find the average net worth in America is less than $100,000. So you're in the top 10% by actually listening to this podcast because you're interested in investing, okay? You're in the top 10%. And why is that? Why are you in the top 10%? And we're going to actually talk about the top 1% of the top 10% here in just a second. And I'm going to tell you why that is. And I call it, I didn't coin this. I didn't come up with this. Um, uh, a mentor of mine came up with this term. And I like it a lot. And he calls it the initiative gap. The initiative gap. Okay. So if you think about it, you are in the top 10% of investors who want to have an interest in, want to increase their net worth and their income because you're taking initiative to do it. And there's obviously a gap in the initiative of the 90 plus percent of folks that don't. But here's where this is a problem. So what I've talked about so far, I mean, it's pretty logical. So you are listening, you're involved in your investing, you've got the initiative to do so. Those that don't, don't have the initiative to do so. And it's kind of like uh, the saying, by, you, by their fruits, you shall know them. So if your fruits are... Nice income, nice net worth, nice investing, and you're continuing to progress in all of that. Your fruits are showing where your initiative is, right? If you're not, so if you're not expanding, if you're not growing your income or net worth, um, you don't have initiative in that way, at least not yet. And so what I've talked about there, I think, is pretty logical. And... And by the way, so if 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 you're if there's somebody that doesn't want to do this, so let's say, I mean, like a, an example, extreme example would be a a Mother Teresa type. Okay, so you know, Mother Teresa had no interest in expanding her wealth. Okay, so there there are those people, but in that ninety percent, we all know that they're not Mother Teresa. Now, here's the other interesting thing. The other interesting thing is. With this initiative gap, as I said, you can consider yourself a top 10 percenter. But then, out of the top 10 percent, there's a top 5 or 1 percenter. Right? I mean, there is. So what's the difference between the top 5 or 1 percent of investors in terms of their income and their net worth? Let me give you just, I'm going to read a quick sentence that's in front of me in a publication that uh, I'm reading, and it goes something like this. Buffett also says he reads more than 20 investing books in 2018. Okay. Let's just take that one sentence. Buffett says he read more than 20 investing books in 2018. So, 
How many other professional investment fund managers do you think have the same habit? So obviously, you've got initiative on Buffett's behalf and not so much on most other fund managers. And if you really want to know the difference between the the 10% and then the top 5 and even the 1%, is the initiative gap closes substantially even more so. And investing in themselves, investing in their families, and investing maybe in their businesses, and expanding their investment becomes a daily habit. Daily habit. Not when they feel like it. Not when they get around to it. A daily habit. And so no one should be surprised that most billionaires began scrapping and hustling and developed the habit of doing so and continue to do so because it's a daily habit of theirs, right? I mean, if you think that a billionaire got lucky and just happened to be in the lucky sperm club, There may be a handful of those, sure, but the vast majority are self-made. Why? Because of that initiative gap. Okay, so here's the interesting thing about this. The initiative gap exists, oddly enough, for us, and we're actually better off as investors because the 90% don't want to do anything. Really? So in other words, because the 90% of investors, the 90% of the population do not take investing seriously enough to devote time to it, much less every once in a while, that's actually an advantage for other people, right? It's an advantage for us because we know what we know. It's kind of like... See, you and I, against, compared to the, to the rest of the population when it comes to investing, we're not that much smarter than they are. As a matter of fact, I would argue that out of that 90%, there's a lot of high IQ people in there. They're not, we are not that much smarter. We just have a lot more initiative. And they basically relinquish investing, I don't know, I'll call it territory to us, by their lack of initiative. Contrary to what politics would tell you, contrary to what Bernie may be saying, uh, contrary to what a lot of uh, political people are saying and will be saying even more as the election grows closer into 2020, it's them making the big gap between the successful investor and everybody else. Not the successful investor. That's really the way it is. And think of it this way. So a record number of people bought Powerball tickets in October. The jackpot was over, I think it was over $500 million. Think about this. How many people mustered up enough initiative to go buy a lottery ticket, but do you think they had the same initiative to look into being a better investor for themselves, their families, and their futures? Do you think they got up enough initiative to go to Barnes & Noble and buy a book on investing? Do you think they had enough initiative, hell, to go to the public library? To go to, I don't know, my website. I've got books you can download. It doesn't cost anything. How much initiative do you think all of those people that bought lottery tickets that are in that 90% had when it came time or it comes time to their investing? See, the interesting thing is to be worth more You've got to do the things that attract more worth, like taking initiative, bridging the initiative gap, 
and working on yourself. And this is really true in about everything. And, and I don't want to sound like I'm on a soapbox and I'm preaching about all this. I'm not. Okay. But us as investors, we really need to be careful about this. We really do. So I want to make something clear, though, right now. In case some of you are having some kind of a, you know, a morality fit with me right now. I want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not commenting on the worth of a person as a human being. I'm not doing that. Okay, like, I, like my mother Teresa comment. If people want to do that, they choose to do that, they elect to do that, God bless them, that's fine. And acknowledge readily, there are nice, pleasant, hardworking people that really don't have much initiative towards being a, an investor or a better investor in bettering themselves. I, I'm fine, okay? You know, then there's the other things that, that can get in the, um, that can be distractions that I think a lot of the 90% of folks that aren't really, um, have the initiative with their investing really fall prey to. And that would be things like, you know, binge watching, um, Game of Thrones, um, busy, busy, busy on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you know, playing video games like Fortnite or whatever. Uh, you know, a lot of that's going on. And that is the exact opposite of taking the initiative and learning to be a better investor and improving your lifestyle, your life, your family's life as a result. So what's my point? What am I getting to? Well, I, th I think I've made my point. And over this 4th of July holiday, I guess I wanted to share with you my thoughts on this initiative gap and really relate to you that uh, you are in the top 10%. And the question I would have is, what are you doing to get in the top 5 to 1% if that's what you want to do? And knowing that all of us have the same opportunity of initiative and it exists in every one of us. And it's just a matter of doing what needs to be done with that initiative gap and bridging that gap. Uh, you are where you are financially, more than likely. You are the investor you are, beginner, seasoned, pro, super pro, your net worth is where it is all because of that initiative you've taken. And again, you're in the top 10% just by listening to me because you're taking the initiative to do so. So as you spend time over the holiday or even if you're listening to this podcast and it's not the holiday, uh, give some thought, do some reflection on yourself. Where are you with this initiative and your initiative gap compared to where you are now and where you want to get to and how can you close that gap? That's number one. Number two is you do not owe anything to anyone, no matter how guilty they may make you feel, no matter how entitled they feel they may be, because they don't have the initiative or haven't taken the initiative to do what you're doing, study what you've studied, spent the time that you've spent, and if you continue to do all of that, you owe them nothing. No guilt. No guilt. Their results are because of their initiative, not yours. Their lack of, and we talked about that earlier in the podcast. So it's basically, uh, what can you do? What are you doing to bridge that initiative gap from where you are to where you want to be? Not having any guilt about it or any obligation about it because of the time, effort, and energy you're spending on your investing in bridging that gap. Uh, and lastly, having fun with it. I mean, a lot of times people think that investing is boring and drags on and there's charts and there's graphs and there's... I mean, when we had our last discovery day, we walked through a bunch of apartments and had people here and we're walking through apartments, we're having a conversation, we're having, we, we had a good time. We had a great time. And there's no reason you don't have to be an ass 
to be an apartment property owner, apartment property investor, right? You don't have to be an ass to do a good job there or enjoy it or be profitable with it. So think about those things as you go through your weekend or whenever you're listening. Think about the initiative gap. Know that it exists. Know it's out there. Know that you are taking steps to close that gap for yourself. Uh, Have no guilt or obligation about it. And lastly, um, continue to see that vision of where you want to be, you, your family, by continuing to close that initiative investment gap. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Whenever you've listened, take care. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com.